what is going on guys it's your boy nistro and we are back again we just keep flipping today because there is so much more that i need to tell you guys that uh, i have discovered and not just myself but with the help of a few people who have joined the ground game discord thank you guys for shooting your thoughts and your theories at me as well there is even uh one individual who sent in a few replays that we're also going to cover so we're now a flip community we are we are the flip community uh, uh, officially and I, I i just gotta say it, it's it's been an honor bringing flips into 2024 and all i have to say is just get ready last video we we were discovering the power of orphis scorpio and and of the ability for the flip monsters to become an engine thanks to Orphis Scorpio, Lone Fire, and uh, going into Master of Ham, and the Master of Ham getting any flip monster from deck and being able to flip that same monster that turn, allowing for a lot of crazy extensions into combos for a lot of different archetypes, including Tadangle, D-Boy, Scapeghost, you name it. So many flip monsters are able to do so much if they're able to be flipped the turn that they're set. Book of Taiyu would be a crazier card if there were a more consistent way to go into it, is basically what we've learned throughout the past two videos. And now we have reached a trifecta. We have reached a third pillar in the flip monster engine history that allows you to bridge into any flip monster that you want on top of an alternative route to hard making master of ham outside of just needing horse of the floor knights we have expanded on the hard making of master of ham in 2024 flips are going even further beyond from what i first expected now that i'm exploring more of the potential and the ability of flip monsters in 2024 and in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, I am very happy about um, where these uh, decks are going. Now, Zealantis, I should put this little asterisk out here. Uh, Zealantis, some people are calling for it to get hit because of, you know, cough, cough, snake eyes. And if that were to happen, yes, a lot of the strategies and things that we've uh, discovered up to this far may not be viable going into the rest of 2024 uh, but we'll only readjust if necessary i think there's plenty of of, of strategies that you can use with that don't need zealantis some do but plenty don't and i think the best thing we can do now is kind of just wait and see what the future looks like before we uh, go crazy worrying about what may or may not survive a list. One of the other criticisms last time was about hand traps. Uh, hand traps, you know, people were asking like, hey, does this really just die to one hand trap? How can I, you know, make my deck more resilient to hand traps? And I definitely hear you guys. And we, we've got some sauce for you if you want to play around hand traps. Not that much sauce because this is still, just hold on, we're getting there. There are still way more lines that have not been discovered yet still need to be found out before i can put my foot down and say like yes we have consistent plays around hand traps but nature of the game right now is man like everyone's playing like 12 to 15 hand traps if you're a rogue deck that can't play around two or three hand traps anyway it might be kind of tough for you regardless of if you can play around a single hand trap so playing around a single hand trap is cool but can you play around two or three of them like playing around imperm is cool can you play around droll plus ash can you play around nib plus imperm can you play around you know and now you have to start asking yourself more of these questions shifters ghost mourners ghost spells so many different hand traps that could stop us so many different points of the way and instead of being discouraged by the number of hand traps in the game my advice would be get your deck to the best point possible first before you start worrying about how to maneuver around other things and i think as you'll come to see with this trifecta the third way that we have into orphan scorpio is a pretty good hand trap bait. Getting more engine into our deck, the more engine that we have, the more we're able to bait off hand traps, right? Because it will not be using our normal summons and it won't be using too many resources to set up unless we brick um, on multiple copies. But for the most part, it's only one to two cards at most and it, it doesn't require our normal summon at all. You may already know what it is just by me telling you that, but just wait and see. This episode of my flip series now i guess i'm calling it 
is uh, going to transcend what the past two episodes have done and, you know, also still have a little bit of fun to it, still have a little bit of that unexpected nature to it. And I hope you guys have been enjoying the content. Again, I can only, I can't thank you guys enough for the support that you guys have been showing me in the past two videos. So I, I gotta keep delivering. I gotta keep delivering. After this flip video, we're gonna branch out a bit into other kinds of content because there is a lot of them about the bigger Yu-Gi-Oh game and the format and the meta and the ban list. So first off, shout outs to Lex Anarchy in the Ground Game Discord for sending me the following replays. They've sent three replays in the uh, Discord and I'm gonna showcase all of them. I think they're pretty good starters for what we're going to be going through today. This very first one is just utilizing the devil we know, uh, the Orphus Scorpio, getting more out of just resolving Orphus Scorpio. And what does that mean, right? So we're, we're gonna go, right, same combo as last time. And as you can see, we're on Dueling Book this time. It's not gonna be Dueling Book the whole video, but yeah. So. Cobra and Scorpio are two level threes, allowing us to overlay into Ghost Trick Alucard. Alucard can instant overlay into Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. And the cool thing about Mischief is that she has a once per turn, she can detach one to add a Ghost Trick from a uh, spell or trap from deck to hand. So we get to search to Ghost Trick Shot, right? So Shot lets you actually special summon any Ghost Trick monster from hand or graveyard. Then you have the option to flip up a Ghost Trick monster from face down. If it was any monster, this would be a crazy card. And I would say this is like the bona fide way to play flips from this point on. But it's just for Ghost Tricks. Maybe in the future, there is a possible like Ghost Trick flip deck out there because again, Ghost Tricks aren't flip monsters. So that's why we haven't showcased Ghost Tricks yet because at first I thought they were flips and then I learned they weren't flips. And now I'm depressed knowing that they weren't flips. But now I'm happy to know that they can actually be utilized in their own variant of the combo to uh, give you an an engine that can pivot between a lot of things, right? So we can activate Ghost Trick Shot to revive the, the Ghost Trick Alucard. And as you'll come to see, Angel of Mischief, nothing on this card is a hard once per turn. You can make a second one and you can detach the Alucard again to search Ghost Trick Scare this time. And this time Ghost Trick Scare is really interesting because Scare is basically what I wanted Shot to be, because Scare basically allows you to flip up any number of face down monsters you're, you control into face up defense position, meaning we will be able to flip monsters on our opponent's turn. We have a searchable flip card. Now, this doesn't do much for us during our turn, but in case something like Beauregard fails, or if we get nibbed after resolving like Master of Ham, then we still get to keep our face down monster and we still get to flip it up during our opponent's turn, which is really good. So. We get to then trigger the Alucard in Graveyard. When it's sent to Graveyard, it actually gets to recycle a Ghost Trick card in Graveyard. And I don't believe that's once per turn either. So we get to add back our Ghost Trick Shot. And although Shot is once per turn, that basically means that we have a one card combo, 1.5 card combo that got us not only into Instant Fusion and into a card that flips, but also into potential follow-up for the following turn if we want to like uh, go for game or apply a little more pressure, go into SP, Ghost Trick Shot is gonna be a really good card for that. Also, if we use our Ghost Trick Scare, Ghost Trick Shot for Alucard, link off Alucard, we have the option between recycling this, the Shot or the Scare, so we can add back the Scare if we need to flip more, or we can add back the Shot to summon back our Ghost Trick Monsters again, going into the following turn after turn three, right? So we're gonna link off one of the Ghost Trick Angel of Mischiefs into Ghost Trick uh, Festival. It can use any Ghost Trick monster that's not a link. And the reason why we're using it for uh, for a link one is because to make our cross sheep, which you are all are very familiar with, you need two monsters with different names. So you can't use the two Angel of Mischiefs. You have to turn one into the Ghost Trick Festival. So yes, it is four slots in an extra deck to utilize this full combo, which is a big ask, but look at how much follow up and resource that it gets you. Right, unlike Goblin Biker, where Goblin Biker only uses this to go into Draco Future, we could do Draco Future or we can get more engines. So it's it's a little better for us. So now we go for Ham plus uh, Sheep, and Ham's gonna set our Bibble from deck. I'm sure you guys r remember her very well. We're gonna link off into our Beauregard. Beauregard's gonna be able to flip up Bibble, and Bibble's gonna be able to add us our two Prediction Monsters, uh, or Prediction Monster and a uh, Ritual Spell. Ritual spell for Underworld, we're gonna set the Terror Wraith. Uh, Bibble's gonna trigger in the in the graveyard to set herself back, and then we get to set the Ghost Trick Scare. Now, this doesn't look as strong, but once you realize that we have two different flip 
uh, cards that I can flip, that's where this becomes a lot stronger. So, uh, opponent's turn, we go Ghost Trick Scare. We can flip up both our Bibble and uh, our Terror Wraith at once, allowing us to dig for more Prediction Princesses and to summon our MVP Guard Dog. On res, uh, once priority gets passed over, you can borrow guard, uh, guard uh, to flip up the guard dog, and now they are locked out of special summoning. If they have something like an imperm for guard dog, you can use terror wraith. Terror wraith can then flip all your face up monsters or any number of your face up monsters face down, and now you have not only a guard dog, you know, locks them out of, out of the turn, but a way to to protect it without needing to go into main phase, without needing to some, to rely on something like IP Mascarena, because that is one weakness where if you need to rely on Mascarena to resolve this, it could potentially crack. We can do this all draw phase, we can do it all in standby phase, it really doesn't matter what phase we do it in, it's really easy for us to make this happen. Now we're going into more of a hard making Master of Ham kind of build. In the last video, I didn't really take much consideration as to other alternative methods of summoning Master of Ham. I figured out about Floronites and I thought, well, that seems like it's good enough. But I think over time, I slowly felt that maybe Soma plus Floronites is a bit in inconsistent and it might cause a lot of bricked hands. So I needed something else. And I think Rescue Cat was the perfect target to start up the flip engine to allow you to dig into your flip monsters. and. We're gonna showcase it right here. Again, same person showcasing. This is the second replay that they've sent and we're gonna go into it, right? So Rescue Cat gets to attribute itself, summon two level three lower beast monsters from deck, but their effects are negated, right? So even though we just summoned Horse of the Floor Knights, it actually can't use its effect. So we're gonna we're just gonna immediately link off, go into Farajit on Link Summon, Kit will trigger because it was sent to the graveyard, it gets to Mill Nerval. When Nerval sent from uh to the graveyard, it gets to search the Karas. And this is assuming that you don't have another beast in hand. You can just Ferragi, um effect to summon out the Karas from uh, hand. Once Karas is on field, Karas can banish four monsters from your graveyard, as long as they're one of the tri-types, right? Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast, one of the three beasts, to go for our Shireg. If you know what Shireg does, you, you understand why we went this hard to um, banish all these cards. We're not linking off Shireg yet, so what can we do? Well, what we can do is we can go into Bear Brum, and Bear Brum, its very first effect that I really, as a someone who didn't play Tri Brigade, I didn't realize this was a thing, it can actually drop two cards to summon a level four lower Tri type from your banishment. And now Floor Knights will be able to trigger because it was it, its effect is no longer negated. And it's, it's allowed to search Shield Bear. Shield Bear can search any Wind Beast type, including another copy of Floor Knights. And now Floor Knights will be able to Fusion Summon to go into Ham. Ham will be able to get us into Bibble. And now that we have the perfect ratio, Link 2 plus two more monsters, we get to go Borogard. Uh, Charade can, can trigger here. It searches any Tri-type, right? Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast that's level four or lower because we have, actually no, it will be th level three or lower. He actually wouldn't be able to search the Rescue Cat here in this particular scenario, any level three or lower. But yes, you would get an extra search, so maybe you can go for like Karas for follow-up for next turn. Whatever the situation may be, you can search a second Floor Knights to like maybe go into another Master of Ham turn three. World is your fucking oyster. But this doesn't really matter. We're not going to use this for the rest of the turn. This is really just to show that you get to search follow-up. So, Borgard gets to flip up the Bibble, and then Bibble will get to search the Terror Wraith plus the uh, Underworld Ritual. We get to Ritual Summon. Uh, face down, Bibble's gonna trigger to bring herself back out face down. And now we get to use, um, on our opponent's turn, we get to use Borogard to flip up Terror Wraith. Uh, Terror Wraith will be able to uh, summon out Guard Dog straight from deck. And this is all happening during the opponent's turn. And this time we don't get as much protection, right? Because Borogard um, has already used his effect. So now Terror Wraith has to use its effect to flip up Guard Dog. But the issue with that, even if you could chain block like Bibble from being ashed, Guard Dog, there's nothing stopping it from being impermed in this scenario. So just be careful about that, right? But yeah, uh, assuming Guard Dog resolves, you get to search and you get follow up and you, you've you locked your opponent out of a turn. So now combo number three. This one is a lot more interesting, right? So remember how last video I was talking 
about Crawler Soma and how I think, okay, Crawler Soma seems to be a little inconsistent because we need to open it with Force of the Florinites. But now that we have another target that we can open Crawler Soma with, this is actually really interesting. Check this out. So we're gonna get our two discards for the Bear Broom again. Okay, so Imperm Veiler. They, we normal summon cat and they immediately imperm Veiler it, which is the correct time to do it because if this was like a skill drain, rescue cat doesn't care about skill drain, but imperm Veiler works slightly different than skill drain does, meaning cards that send from field to grave still are negated if they started on field. So rescue cat basically its effect would still be able to activate, but its effect would be negated if it were to activate under imperm Veiler. So what's a better solution is to use our crawler Soma. Soma can special summon itself by Book of Mooning our Rescue Cat. Now we get to go into our Crawlers. Crawlers get to go for our Subterror Behemoth Phoenix. Behemoth Phoenix gets to go for Subterror Hound. Okay, so interesting bit of just ruling lore here. When a card says a monster cannot change its battle position, it purely means that by game mechanics. Any card effect that still can change battle position still works. I could not manually flip up this rescue cat, but any card effect that could flip up rescue cat would still work under Crawler Soma. So Crawler Soma actually is a little better than I thought it was because it's not like we're flipping up our monsters manually turn one anyway, right? So yeah, so Shadow Hound allows rescue cat to be flipped face up. And this does two things. One, it triggers Behemoth Fiendus to search another flip monster from our deck to our hand because a monster was flipped face up. But two, and most importantly, Rescue Cat's negation is gone, right? The card was face down and then it flipped back up, meaning it's now live again to use its effect, which is perfect. So we're gonna search our Terror Wraith. I really don't think it matters which monster you summon, but Terror Wraith is cool because as you're gonna see, we're gonna be able to actually get it back from the graveyard, not just from hand. So we're gonna, uh, just like last time, we're gonna summon out Floral plus Kit. Kit's gonna go Nerval, Nerval search out the Karas. Link off into Sheep. We're gonna go Karas here. Uh, we're gonna go for Shireg. And then uh, we're gonna use our Bear Brum. And Bear Brum's gonna be able to drop both the cards in our hand, right? Like our, our extra card plus our Terror Wraith that we searched to grab back our Horse of the Floor Knights. So now we have to use Shield Bearer, Floor Knights Effect, go for Master of Ham. Now they say they messed up with Lack of Zones or, or not to use Sheep because of Lack of Zones, but I'm like, you know, you could just make a like Appalooza or something. Because like, you can just revive one of your tri-types, make like an Apo. But no, you're you're going to be going into Borrow Guard, so that's why you're not making it. I mean, to be fair, you could still summon back anything. Like, Borrow Guard would still be more than legal, you know, to make with four monsters or three. So it, it really doesn't matter. But basically, yeah, you're, you're just going to go into Borrow Guard. Um, Borrow Guard's going to flip up uh, Bibble. Bibble gets out of Terror Ray plus Underworld Ritual of Prediction. And uh, if you read this card right, I know, uh, tough to do for you, Gil, right? So you can Ritual Summon any Prediction Princess monster from hand or graveyard in face up attack or face up or face down defense. So uh, that means our Terror Wraith in graveyard, it's uh, it's fair play. I mean, as long as you don't get Um, We're gonna go for uh, Zeolantis here. You see, in this line, assuming that this is a tri-type, this is legal. Um, assuming this is a tri-type monster. But yeah, uh, we're gonna go Zeolantis just to move everything down. And then we're gonna go Ritual Prediction. And we use Zeolantis here so that we could reacquire the Beauregard flip effect, right? Because it's a soft once per turn. So we use Zeolantis just to get it live again. We flip up the Terror Wraith and now we have the ability to get Guard Dog with the layer of protection from Terror Wraith to flip things back face down if necessary. You can choose not to summon Biblio and revive Master of Ham instead, but you lose the protection on Terror Wraith. Also, don't use Zeolantis' effect after reviving Master of Ham. Master of Ham just won't come back 
if you Zealantis banish it. Because by game mechanics, it's not being banished by Zealantis' effect, it's being banished by its own effect. Uh, because it's not being banished by Zealantis' effect, Zealantis cannot summon it back, even though Master Ham was properly summoned. Just be really careful about that in terms of sequencing Master of Ham in a long scale combo like this. But we basically got the lock and with very little consequence, we got to flip, we, we flip everything face down. We go into uh, turn three, we we hopefully have another prediction princess monster because otherwise I don't know how you're gonna get to another ritual spell with just this, but I'm sure oh, this is more than enough to go for game with. You got at least 10, 10K damage on board and then you could see Atlantis pop during battle phase. You'll be just fine. So the question that you may be asking yourself now is what is the third part of the trifecta? because we've gone through Orphus Scorpio again, we've seen how to hard make Master of Ham and even through a hand trap or two. Now, what what is this third pillar of the Super Heavy Samurai? Well, pfft, what is this third pillar of the Flip Engine? And that is very simply Super Heavy Samurai, right? Well, like once I said, you don't have to use your normal summon, you guys probably could have guessed it. Uh, you, you could have taken a wild guess and figured out, yeah, it was it was probably Super Heavy. So, super heavy, you know, uh, typical combo, Wakashi, Big Benke, Big Benke gets to search uh, any soul. Uh, so we, this time we're searching soul piercer and there's a good reason why, because to make this a one card combo, you have to use your normal summon. If you want to, if you want to make this a 1.5 card combo, you can use uh, the soul guy booster, but to make this a single card combo, you can use soul piercer, use your normal summon. Synchro up into Diabolantis, and then you got ch three chain links. Uh, so you can chain block with the Wakashi, but basically you mill uh, Insect with the Diabolantis, and you search another Super Heavy with the Soul Piercer. So we are going to search another Wakashi, and then we're going to mill the Biblisp. And Biblisp actually, when it's sent to Grave, adds any Predaplant monster from deck to hand. So as you can probably imagine, Orphus Scorpio is the perfect target for that. So now we have a one card route into Orphus Scorpio that is now six more slots in main that can dig for Orphus Scorpio, right? Because opening Wakashi or opening bike now digs us into the best starter for flip. So now we can pendulum summon out the Orphus Scorpio because we already use our normal summon, but trust me, it's not a big deal that we pendulum summon because we, we don't play that much uh, engine in this deck anyway, right? So we can Pendulum Summon out Orphus Scorpio, Orphus Scorpio drop, Summon out Cobra, Cobra Search, go for the Ghost Trick combo again. Wow, look at that. Mischief, go into Shot, Shot Summon back Alucard, go into Mischief, go into Scare, Alucard, bring back the Shot, and this time we're going for good old Utopic Draco Future. Now we can get to the instant fusion with Master of Ham. And this is actually a lot cooler because think about it. We're going to guard dog lock them with just Ghost Trick Scare. We don't really need to go into any of the complex, crazy uh, Borogard lines. Sometimes simplicity is just enough. Like this was one card out of hand to set up this whole combo line. Um, and if you don't feel like, and if you feel like you need an extra layer of protection against uh, your opponent, you can go into something like IP potentially stop them from imperming the guard dog and also uh, stop them from, uh, you know, setting up cards in back row. You can IP, you know, banish. And yeah, it just makes it a lot stronger. And now you have Ghost Trick Shot for follow-up. You have, uh, you're going to have SP possibly, and you're going to have like guard dog here, plus Draco Future to steal monsters your opponent controls if they try to use their effect. It's a really good setup and it, it, it's all off of one card. You could potentially have three to four hand traps in hand that could stop your opponent on top of all of this gas. Set up here that we get to do with the uh, super heavy stuff now. And it's amazing that we now have a third solid pillar to work with in terms of comboing into or getting into the flip engine or now that we've seen all three pillars i want to take a moment to dig a little more into the line of the hard making of master of ham i feel like this is really important if you want to play this deck on master duel uh when master of ham releases with no instant fusion 
maybe even going into the future, I think this may be the best way to play a flip deck. It might just be using it as a sub engine for Tri Brigade or using Tri Brigade as a sub engine for flip, whichever you consider it being. Just utilizing the engines together to make the most out of both of them. So I wanted to show my own personal takes on what you could do with a single rescue cat. So I wanted to take Outstanding Dog Mary here and <laughs> I wanted to have Rescue Cat just be a one card line into the entire thing. I don't want any other cards in hand or, uh, you know, like the Bear Brum Banish. I feel like discarding two for that is a big ask. So I'm like, okay, what if I try to just discover a way that doesn't require you to discard two cards to make the full combo? So what I found is that when we link off our outstanding dog, Mary, it actually gets to search us a beast type into hand, outstanding dog, Marin. And then Kit will mill Nerval, Nerval will trigger, add the Karas, and now we have Karas plus um, Moran. And Moran, now Moran's kind of weird. It had a when effect, but it's a mandatory effect. So when you send it to grave, it has to shuffle back into deck, right? Like when this card is sent to your graveyard, shuffle it back into deck. But that's fine. It's not a big deal. So normally here you would banish four, go into Shireg, but because you only have two, you're going to banish it to go into uh Farajit. and if you happen to have four of the floor knights boom shield bearer boom floor knights effect boom go ham uh don't hold the cross sheep you can you can trigger the cross sheep bring out bring back the kit and now we're gonna bring out the guard dog now we're gonna link three into appalooza it's gonna have a 2400 and then we get to go for kit Kit's gonna get to banish two more, go for a Bear Brum, right? And, well, what's the point of going for Bear Brum? We don't have, we're not really um, offering any discards here. We'd only have three other cards in hand. Well, the reason for going for Bear Brum is that you can go for Boreload still, right? Um, linking off with the Tribe Gates, you're not locked into only summoning um, the Tri-types. It's, you're only allowed to use Tri-types to make Link Monsters. So, we're making Beauregard with Beast and Beast Warrior types. Actually, is is uh actually yeah, all, all three of them are Beast. Actually, that's that's pretty cool. And now you will get to trigger Bear Brum. And Bear Brum can search you Tribe Gate Revolt. Now it's gonna go back into deck because I don't have any other cards in hand. But I'm just stopping it here to tell you this is what your end board's gonna look like. It's gonna be Beauregard, Appalooza plus. Tribe Gate Revolt. Now, Revolt searchable. You don't have to play as a three of, but we are playing a second charade in the extra deck. Not not just in this twenty eight card extra deck, but in the actual in the actual list of this variant. Uh, I am still playing a second charade so that uh, we can utilize Revolt to um, link off into charade and use it as an interruption during the opponent's turn. So we're not just ending on Apple plus Beauregard. We're ending on Apple Beauregard plus charade to potentially banish. Uh, problem cards our opponent controls going into turn three because then we can use the nerve all again and once the nerve all sent to graveyard we get to right and then uh after that farajit's gonna trigger right so farajit draws one and then lets us manipulate our hand so we could potentially dig for more hand traps and yeah so we're ending on uh three negates guard dog plus a tribe gate revolt which you know as i said will you will be able to add it to hand what if we just open Trabigate Fractal, right? You're seeing you're seeing some of the sauce pretty early here, but what if we just open Trabigate Fractal? So this is uh, just Fractal by itself. We get to go uh, Mill Kit, Mill Nerval, go Karas. I guess you can say, yes, you will need another Tri-type. No, it doesn't have to be Mega Hamster. It could be any Tri-type. But yes, uh, any Tri-type plus, uh, plus Fractal. It's perfect. You go Shireg, Cross Sheep. Shireg searches uh, Floor Knights. Floor Knights does his thing. And this is like just any other typical combo. You go Ham. Ham, Cross Sheep. You go for Guard Dog. You go for Beauregard. Beauregard flip up during our opponent's turn. And now we just lock them out of a turn. So now we don't even need to open Rescue Cat or... We don't even need to open Scorpio. We don't need to open Super Heavy Samurai. Tri Brigade is actually Flip Engine. Tri Brigade is the Flip Engine. It is, they are one and the same. It's not even like 
uh, Super Heavy Samurai where we have to go through three different layers of engines just to get to where we want to be because we have to go through Super Heavy to get to the Predator Plant to get to the flip. It's like Tri Brigade is the flip engine. It's like digs you straight into horse, horse into ham. It, it's all part of the same line. So now we're going to use this third card in hand. And this third card in hand is called Ultra Palmerization. And we're going to showcase it in just a second. So this time we're, we're going to go for, instead of going for the horse off of Shireg, we're going to go for the cat. Use our normal summon on the cat. Cat's going to summon out our two beast types. Well, this is, this is looking kind of familiar. Now we have two beast types on field and Ultra Palmerization can fusion summon a monster by paying 2,000 using two monsters you control as uh, fusion materials. Now, your opponent cannot negate Ultra Palmerization. They can't respond to it. It's basically like Super Poly, except you're actually just using your own monsters, right? Like it's it, it, it's it's Super Poly without the unfair parts of it. Now, the reason why you would use this over regular Palmerization is because, as I will show you very quickly, Ultra Parmization gets to banish itself from Graveyard and target the fusion that was summoned with its effect. And then it summons back the monsters that were used as fusion material. So basically, frame one after you finish resolving Master of Ham, you should use Ultra Parmization while Master of Ham still on field summoned off of Ultra Parmization. And the two cards sent off of Ultra Parmization are still in grave and have not been moved or touched yet. By game mechanics, they are still considered sent to the graveyard by Ultra Parmization. If one of them were to move and then to come back, like let's say you were to banish one and then bring it back to the graveyard, it would no longer count. But while they're still in grave, before you move them anywhere else, you can resolve Ultra Parmization to summon back both monsters that you use to make the fusion in the first place. And look at that, that's pretty good extension for off of just one spell card that's three monsters that we've uh increased our board presence by so now we get to go farajit we're going to trigger a uh, cross sheep because it's pointing to master of ham and now we're going to summon back the kit and guess what kit's no longer negated so kit's kit gets used as effect now go for bear brum and just like last turn i i mean last replay go Boroughguard, right and it just same idea right we didn't we, we just used like one less card in hand this time, uh, or one more card in hand this time, but uh, we get to go, like we link off the Bear Brum and the uh, Farajit. We get to go into a two negate Apple this time instead of a three negate one, but we get to add a uh, Tribrigade Revolt and it's the same board basically, but with one less interruption. So now I kind of wanted to take the Rescue Cat plus Crawler Soma replay to the next level so i'm thinking okay i i really like what what you did with uh soma plus cat but i want to see what soma plus cat can do without worrying about hand traps without worrying about well uh, you know our opponent being major haters so we're gonna book of moon one of our two beast types because it really doesn't matter and then we're gonna go for crawler soma crawler spine and crawler receptor any two level two crawlers, and then we get to go into Proxy F Magician. So Proxy F allows us to fusion summon using monsters we control. So now we don't even have to rely on a main deck card to fusion summon. We can use something like Proxy F to essentially proxy the Palmerization and go for Master of Ham. Now Master of Ham gets to summon, its, uh, summon itself, and then Kit and Mary will trigger. We get to and Maron. We get to summon Guard Dog face down. And Nerval will trigger now to search Karas, link off into Cross Sheep. Karas is going to summon itself. Uh, Maron's going to trigger, so is Cross Sheep here. Cross Sheep's going to bring back the kit. Kit's going to be alive and well, right? Because it was. Uh... Oh, but I didn't use this effect actually. Uh, we're we're going to use the Karas's effect, not not the kit's effect. And now we're going to get to go into something like SP, and we're going to go uh, for Tribe Gate Revolt. This time we're going to keep it in hand. That is the same idea, right? This time if they try to like imperm our guard dog, we will have SP to protect ourselves from like any sort of imperm or any sort of like uh, target negation. But it, it would really only just be imperm. I guess droplet, they, they would have it. But Well, I want to take the super heavy engine a little further. Now that we have our pillars, now that we have our hard making 
Master of Ham, we have our Scorpio, and now we have our Super Heavy. Now I want to differentiate the reason why you may want to choose a particular engine over the other. In the last video, we went over Tendangles and we went over Symphonic Warriors, both of which were really combo heavy decks that were relatively unexplored. And so I, I kind of want to take that same approach to this video. We have something here like Gravekeeper's Spy, which on a first read seems okay. Maybe we can get something off of this. What you come to find is that a lot of the Gravekeepers tend to not really be self-sufficient cards. Nothing in Gravekeepers is inherently self-sufficient or able to provide for itself. What really ends up happening is you have a lot of cards that can kind of do something that can kind of make a board state happen, but you need to have other cards that work with them. But by having something like Motorbike or the Super Heavy package where it can create a game state where we have the extra support that Gravekeeper needs all off of one card, I think it actually is a pretty good argument as a, as a decent way to play Gravekeepers in 2024. So utilizing the flip engine, we will start our turn with a bike into Wakashi, into Super Heavy, Super heavy into Gaia Booster this time, right? Because we don't want to waste our normal summon. Gaia Booster's going to go. The Avalantis. We're going to get uh, Bybliss. Bybliss is going to add Orphus Scorpio. Orphus Scorpio dropped the Spy. The spy was, a, spy was a decoy. It actually didn't matter what monster you drew here. What really matters here is the Book of Tayo. So we're going to go Cobra. Cobra's going to search Instant Fusion. We're going to go Cross Sheep. Instant Fusion into Ham. Ham, Sheep really doesn't matter which one you bring back as long as it's one of your two earth monsters right because you have your guy booster and you have your motorbike so link off into Borogard. Borogard's gonna flip up our gravekeeper spy who are we gonna summon gravekeeper's recruiter this card was a fucking goat back in the day if if you played gravekeepers back in the day you remember this card i still i never even played gravekeepers and i remember this card from back in the day because like Niggas were just on this shit like crazy. It's like they just kept adding and adding and adding. And it's like then freaking Wonder Wand came out around Zexla era. And then people just kept going crazy with like all the plus that they could go through with uh, Gravekeepers. It was crazy. So what are we doing now? Uh, are we going to Link Summon? No, we're not going to Link Summon. Silly. We're going to go for Awakening of the P Possessed Nefarious Sir Archfiend. So... Nefarious or Archfiend can actually summon itself straight from deck by sending a Spellcaster and a level 4 lower earth, right? So all the Gravekeepers are Spellcasters. And uh, thanks to Cross Sheep, we get to bring back an earth, which would be Bike. Now, in a smarter world, if we had any other extender, you could use Bike and Spy to Synchro into Axel, Synchro Stardust, and then go into Baron. Cool. I mean, sure, that would be the boring, safe way to go about it. But you know what would be funny? You know what would be really funny is if we just summoned this Archfiend Nefarious or Nefarious or Archfiend on them. And then we got a search off of Recruiter while reviving that same Recruiter that just searched a card. And then we're going to go Zealantis. Zealantis is going to get to bring everything back. Except Spy is going to be face down. And as you can see, we have an immediate remedy for Spy being face down. We get to Book of Tayo. Spy is going to summon another Recruiter. So now, by linking all three into a Selene... <laughs> We get to go plus two. So we're going to search Commandant and we're going to search Shaman. The crazy thing about this is that Selene gets counters for each spell card on field and engrave. Now, thanks to the super heavies being on field, we actually don't need three spell cards in graveyard and we don't need to rely on Necro Valley being on the field either because Necro Valley would screw up our Selene. Somewhat. So, Selene, remove three counters, summon out Recruiter. Now we're going to link all four into an Appalooza. Recruiter's going to search again. Commandant's going to search Necro Valley. Necro Valley's going to activate. Going to Pendulum Summon. We get to go Headman. Get back our Gravekeeper Spy. We're going to go Spiritualist. Going to go for Supernaturalist. Yeah, I mean, this is about as good as it gets. So, Shaman is a monster effect negate for everything that happens in the graveyard. So, she's basically your walking floodgate. She also has inherent protection for Necro Valley while she's on field. So you have a four negate Apo, you have a crazy big fusion, you have a Shaman, and you have Gravekeeper Spy. Now I realized I was actually supposed to have hidden temples of the Necro Valley 
on top of all this. So let's just pretend the Hidden Temples of the Necro Valley was sitting like slap right here. Just slap the Hidden Temples of the Necro Valley like right here. But it's not necessary, is it? Right? Even without this Hidden Temples, you can go Gravekeeper Spy uh, next turn and you'll still be able to get like enough damage on board to go for game. Supernaturalist isn't that great of a card. If I'm being honest with you, it only adds Gravekeepers on end phase. And I don't know who this support was for, but I was really inspired because I went to Xenos uh, a few weekends ago to play a YCS qualifier. I got fourth after tiebreaker. I got fourth. In reality, I had enough points to get second. I faced a Gravekeeper player in that tournament, and when he flipped summon Spy, it just—I was already in Flip Brain. I was already in Flip Brain. I wasn't playing a flip deck, but I was in flip brain, you know, like I was well aware of all the flip monsters and still trying to figure out more combos for flips. And then this dude was like unironically playing Gravekeepers in 2024. He royal tributed me both games. He had like summon limit, Necro Valley, and it was all extremely underwhelming because <laughs> I still OTK'd him uh, game one and then... No, I, I OTK'd him in game two through Royal Tribute. Game one, uh, I got into... Uh, I was just able to clear his board so easily. I, I don't I don't know what it was. It just There was just no threat of, like, lasting consequences. He had, like, an imperm and stuff for, for, to stop my turn initially, but all I had to do was, like, wait, like, two turns to draw more support, and I was able to, like, just get it from there. It really wasn't that hard of a matchup for me. So I felt obligated just to see how much more this deck could get with, you know, the super heavy flip engine support and, you know, the results fucking speak for themselves. Unfortunately, I just feel like Gravekeepers just need more support. They just need, because they are heavily reliant on other cards doing the work for them. Like, this needs to have Necro Valley, that needs to have this. And there aren't enough cards that are self-sufficient. Everything in Gravekeepers needs you to already have something set up for it to work efficiently even the floodgates even the counter trap all that stuff like we need more cards that search spells and traps that mention grave keepers not just stuff that searches the monsters but i mean if you can shaman like a snake eyes player under like apo and you know other stuff i guess that could be a good you know it, it's still not the worst setup in the world a supernaturalist can't be destroyed by card effects it, it's it's kind of redundant because we have two different monsters that stop necro value from being destroyed by card effects but it, it, i don't know it, it's it's just a kind of weird situation with like gravekeepers and like their support but i really do like that like shaman because of its original stats can be summoned off of gravekeeper spy or it can be searched by recruiter it can it can be either or so even though it is level six it's definitely flexible and gravekeepers chief as well um it may not seem like all that but it actually has a pretty cool um, a fact that stops your graveyard from being affected by Necro Valley. You'll see why that's a big deal in the next one. So I had to, I, I, I needed more spice. I needed something more. I needed, I was like, okay, we can play super heavy and grave keepers and a bunch of floodgates. Sure. You know, r recruiter loops. I'm, I'm down for that, but I need something more. I want something and this is what really inspired me to make the Gravekeeper combo lines. Because no, this is going to be 90% the same, except it's going to end a lot differently. <laughs> so, as you can see, we're not going into Guard Dog. We need something that is worth the loss of Guard Dog. And I think I found what that is through my time testing and experimenting and trying this deck out. So we're going to go into the exact same line again. Zeal, bring back our Gravekeepers, bring back Spy as a set so that we can Book of Tayu. Yes, Book of Tayu in Gravekeepers is tantamount to like just being the best card in the deck. Like Spy is gets you so much and like being able to Book of Tayu a Spy is, I don't know, just a really good feeling. So Selene, double Recruiter Search. Uh, Celine can actually chain block the recruiters, which uh, I don't know if I mentioned that last time, but you know, you can see it. Now we get to go Artemis, which I guess doesn't really make a difference uh, because we're, we're going to link all four of these off again anyway. 
but Artemis does actually is actually a, a card. Now, Artemis does kind of stink sometimes because it can only be special summoned once per turn. Meaning, like, let's say you happen to have this on field when you see Atlantis, this isn't coming back. You're losing a monster if you see Atlantis while this is on board and you link summon it that turn. So just be really careful when you sequence this card out. It's still a really good card to have. And we get our extra searches. And we go double Selene now. We go uh, into Recruiter again. And now our Apple only has two materials, but we are co-linked with the Atlantis. So now we, uh, you know, if they try to attack us, we can, you know, pop some motherfuckers. And look at how many cars we have in hand. Holy shit. Holy shit. We just searched like fucking five, six cards. We're going to pinch them, summon all of them. Exceed all three level fours into the Alchemic Magician. Dude, I read this card. I said I had to find a way. And I can't tell you how long it took me to find a way into a card like Alchemic Magician. Because Gravekeepers are so deceivingly gassy. Like, you think, you read a card like Recruiter, you realize that there's a Link 1 like, uh, like Artemis. And you're like, wait a minute, there has to be some fucking gas here. But then, like, what you slowly realize is that, like, it severely relies on your ability to flip up Spy multiple times. And, yes, Book of Taiyu is great, but imagine trying to playtest this without Book of Taiyu. Imagine having to make a second Boroughguard. You have to waste so many resources to make that second Boroughguard. I think Book of Taiyu is a staple, like a hard staple. I can't even emphasize enough how many copies of Book of Taiyu this deck would need if it could play more than three of it. Because holy shit, it does everything. It's everything for the deck outside of the super heavy engine. So, what does Alchemic Magician do? Uh, you've probably already read it by the time I've been ranting, but during your end phase, you can detach one, send a card from hand to grave, then choose any spell card from your deck and just set it. So... Um, there's a bunch of broken utility spell cards that are quick plays, uh, not to mention spell and trap removal like Cosmic Twin Twister. There is, um, Blizzard to stop, to negate opponent's spell cards. There's Droplet to, uh, stop our opponent's monsters. There's a bunch of interesting spell cards that we can, uh, access using Alchemic Magician. So which one are we going to get? I said, fuck it. Spellbound. Now, the reason why I said Spellbound, because think about this, right? Their monster effects in Grave, worthless. Necro Valley already is so much of a floodgate that it locks them out of the Grave, basically, uh, completely. Nothing in Grave can be banished, so Voiceless, done, cooked. Like, Necro Valley makes sure, like, nothing gets out of Graveyard. Like, Necro Valley is a lot strong. Like, they've errated Necro Valley, like, maybe, like, ten different times. Because initially, it, it could only stop cards that move different cards, now it stops anything from moving out of the graveyard, which, and that is crazy. On top of the, you know, attack defense boost for Gravekeepers, which is uh, very welcomed. So you put a spell bond on top of that, just look at how much damage we get to do, right? So Wakashi, boom. Big Ben K, boom. Bo booster, boom. On the summit of booster, we spell bound, right? So, uh,. Now, can't be used for Synchro, Link Exceed, cannot be attributed, so not even Ritual Summoned. Uh, so, tough luck, right? So, they set their spy, Book of Taiyu, right? And that's what we got the Apple for. Negate. Battle phase. We got Zealantis. Pop one, pop two. GG's. GG's. <laughs> and that's all because we can get into Alchemic Magician, dude. I forgot... Like, I've never, like, seen this card actually resolved. I don't think I've ever played... The, like, I've seen Slacker Magician all the time, right? We've seen Slacker. You've seen Down Nerd. You've never seen much love for Alchemic Magician. Until now. Like, we are making things possible off of... What is it? Two cards? A bike plus a Book of Tayo plus a discard? 2.5 card combo? You get to lock them out of their, basically out of extra deck for a turn. Unless you lock them out of graveyard, lock them out of extra deck. I do just need to say this, right? Like, Royal Tribute's a thing, right? Like, if you hard open Necro Valley, it's like, oh, well, what about hand traps? Royal Tribute. 
You hard open Necro Valley, activate one, activate two. Get rid of all them shits. Get rid of all them fucking hand traps and my mans. I was like, well, what if you have monsters in? Well, don't, don't, don't worry about that. All right. I get it. It's, it's a big contradictory. I get it. But yeah, you can stop a lot of hand traps. Like, let's say you have a Necro Valley, Taiyu, Spy, and then you also get the Royal Tribute. It's like, set the Spy, Royal Tribute, send everything, book a Taiyu, go crazy. Book a Taiyu, go burr. Hidden Temples. And th this is the one that I, I forgot to show during the combos, but yes, like imagine that you also had a Hidden Temples. So yeah, yes, I understand. No way to search this card yet. Yet, there's no way to search this card. But once there is, this deck is broken. Once once there's a way to like legitimately search Hidden Temples or even uh, the Imperial Tombs, this deck's goaded, just straight up. Instead of needing to hard open these things, we can search them. This deck would be goaded, just straight up. Goaded with all the sauce. And you only need the one Spellbound. So funny enough, I was gonna set Called by the Grave, but like you can't activate Called by while Necro Valley's on field. Just straight up can't, right? So Called by is actually worthless in this deck. Uh, funny, funny enough, like unless you're using it to protect your Super Heavies or your Orphus Scorpio. Slowing it down a bit. Going back to the basics. I forgot to show this replay last video, so I figured I'd show it now. Um, and as you can tell by the W Nebula Meteorite, this is uh, Worms. So, Worm Victory, what can it do? When it's flipped up, it pops all face-up monsters on the field except Worms. That's about it. So what's the catch? What's the benefit of using a card like this? Well, the benefit is that you get to wipe the board, I guess. And the funny thing is, is that, uh, right, you can, so, right, so we sequenced so that, like, Nebula Meteorite would flip up Worm Victory, um, on, on their summons so that once they're done with the res of everything, all their monsters would be popped, right? So they bring back their monster. Now, Chainlink 1, Worm Victory, Chainlink 2, Borgard, if they have any sets, you can flip them sets up. Bye, Felicia. Now, obviously, that's not smart against a Shadow Monster. It's better to keep that Shadow Monster set, but by all means, right? Uh, now, Nebula Meteorite will flip the Worm Victory back face down, and then it will summon any level 7 or higher light uh, Reptile Monster. So, I think the one that's really good is Aaron King of the Abyss. If your opponent adds a card from deck to hand, they have to send a card from hand to graveyard. And, uh... If a monster your opponent controls is sent to the grave by a card effect, you get to add a light or dark reptile from deck or grave to your hand. So it'll probably just be more worms, just, just being real, but. So going into the final combo of today, what sauce do we have here? We have Gusto Griffin, because now as I've explored some of the stronger more obvious flip monsters. I wanted to start exploring some of the more niche flip monsters for decks that have probably been forgotten by the general Yu-Gi-Oh! Greater Yu-Gi-Oh! community for a while now and just see what I could do. Like, there's no guide for Gusto on the internet. Like, the coolest thing I saw, and I didn't even see this before I made the combo, it's just something I saw, like, just to see if there's anything else. Um, was a Gusto Super Heavy Samurai adventure deck for Master Duel. And the whole idea is you drop Griffin to get tuners for your adventure package stuff. Or like Gusto Pearly Sprite, you drop Griffin, Griffin can then summon out another copy of itself from deck. And you get a free level two on top of your pearly monster. That's that's as that's as saucy as it gets for Gusto. And you read a lot of the Gusto cards, and you'll understand exactly why it only gets that saucy because Gusto cards really are not that well designed in the greater scheme of things. Just like a lot of dual terminal archetypes, like a lot of the cards are just like, why are they worded this way? Why why are you like this? but it's fine. So we drop Griffin for Orphus Scorpio. Griffin gets to trigger and he gets to chain block the Cobra for us. So Cobra gets to go protected from any sort of uh, uh, Ash or uh, Mourner as well. 
and we get to summon out our Gusto Squirro. Uh, as you can imagine, he's not going to stay on the field for long. Going to Baron. Going to Cross Sheep. Fusion. Ham Sheep. Sheep's going to bring back our bike. No, we're not going to go any nefarious shenanigans in this one, but we are going to get to summon Kamui Hope of Gusto. And when Kamui Hope of Gusto is flipped, he gets to summon any Gusto tuner from deck. And this sounds really hopeful. As a matter of fact, just look at how happy this nigga looks. Like, he's, he's cheesing it about how hopeful he is that he gets to bring out more Gusto tuners from deck. And uh, I can tell you that means dick all. That means fuck all in terms of actual Gusto combos because that that ain't Falco. That ain't fucking Falco. I'll, I'll tell you that. So we're going to Baron pop the Falco, right? So uh, all the, like some of the Gustos are worded in a way where it's like, if you're not very familiar with uh, problem solving car text and the way that the game works, you would read a card like Gusto Falco and think, oh, well, if it's sent to the graveyard, let's say for a synchro summon, it should be able to trigger, right? Because it can, it's sent from field to grave, except by battle. Well, when you have a one effect that says you can, meaning it's optional, that is the worst kind of effect that you can have because you will trigger off of basically nothing except being directly targeted for destruction. There is almost nothing else that can, um, trigger something like Gusto Falco. You can't use it for Synchro, Link, whatever, because the last thing that has to happen is Gusto Falco being sent to the graveyard. When you're summoning an extra deck monster of some kind or tributing for a ritual, those are all like, it leaves and then the monster is summoned. It doesn't happen simultaneously. So it doesn't get to trigger for a lot of things like that. So either it has to be something where the last thing to resolve is you know, it being sent to the graveyard, like Baron just popping it for free. Or um, it has to be like a, a card effect that says, and if you do, like metal fills all say, and if you do. So like all the metal fills would be able to pop your gustos and then get you more uh, cards from deck. So when Falco is popped, it summons a gusto from your deck and face down defense. Wow, that's so cool. Well, uh, what monster are we gonna summon and face down defense? Well, maybe we can summon another Kamui. No, we're not. We're not gonna. We're not gonna summon another Kamui. We're gonna go for Pilika, Descendant of Gusto. The reason why we're going for Pilika is because of its ability to revive Wind Tuners from our graveyard. Now, Borogard is just sitting here, but it can't flip up the Pilika, and Pilika is only a normal or special summon. So, our problem solver, Zealantis, it solves a lot of problems for the flip deck. Right now, we get to just special summon Pilika face up. Uh, because Falco, that ain't Falco, forced it to be face down. So, Pilika gets to bring back any wind tuner. But now, oh no, we're l locked into wind for the rest of the turn. What does that mean? Well, we can Baron pop again. Now, when Squirro is popped, I, I, I should have realized, I should have told you guys, like, we, we summoned Squirro and not um, Falco back. When Squirro is popped, we get to summon any level 5 or higher Gusto monster from our deck. As of right now, the, the, that's only two monsters. There are only two level five or higher Gusto monsters. One of them being uh, Reese, Whirlwind of Gusto. So she can return cards from hand to deck to basically creature swap Gusto monsters with your with your opponent. And I think that's really interesting, but too bad that she's stuck in a Gusto deck because <laughs> it's, it's really hard to actually get her out. Like look at how much we had to go through just to get her out. Even though, yes, it is a 1.5, or no, this is this is a bona fide two-card combo, right? Griffin has to be a card, and Motorbike has to be itself. So this is a bona fide two-card combo. I guess, like, Motorbike could be Bike or Wakashi, because it doesn't really matter about which one it is. But yeah, two-card combo. To get out Reese, Whirlwind of Gusto. And what are we going to do with this Reese? Are we going to do some complex combo line where we synchro, climb, and... Nope, we're going to go Rubber Band Shooter. We're going to go Rubber Band Shooter. Now, Rubber Band Shooter has two really good effects. So first off is that during your main phase, you, get, you can get an extra normal summon for a Wind Monster, but you're locked out of the extra deck for the turn, except for Synchro Monsters. We're not going to do that, right? We don't even have any Wind Monsters in hand anyway. Its second effect is that it can banish a Wind Synchro, 
and then reveal two speed road monsters from deck with different names equal to the level of the synchro, then your opponent randomly picks one to add to hand. Well, I can tell you this is the illusion of choice for your opponent because we're going to choose uh, speed road Takatomborg and speed road car turbo. Now, in this scenario, it really doesn't fucking matter which one is picked because if if uh, if they pick Takatomborg, Takatomborg could summon itself and then uh, once it's on field, it can tribute itself, special summon a speed road tuner from deck, and we're already locked into win thanks to Pilika, so nothing lost. Or we can get the turbo, where if we control a wind monster, it can special summon itself, but we're locked into wind monsters for the rest of the turn, which we already are locked into win. So regardless of which one is picked, we get to pick, uh, we, either way, we get to make the same board. So car turbo can summon itself, and it's like, oh shit, we have uh, the ability to make an Axel Synchro. Yes, we do. Is that what we're going to do, though? Absolutely fucking not. Because uh, we already made Baron. There's no other level 10 wind synchro that is uh, generic or all of them require synchro tuners. That's that's the other big issue. The rest of them all require like synchro tuners. None of them were really like good at just being there. But this is the Gusto deck. We actually had the ability to make a Crystal Wing there as well. Um, if you go into High Speed Roid Hagoicha, when you have the level 2 plus level 3 Gusto on field, you can synchro into Hagosha, link off the Hagosha and the, uh, the the third Gusto monster into a uh, Rubber Band Shooter. Rubber Band Shooter is going to get you either Car Turbo or Takatomborg. Summon either the Car Turbo or Takatomborg. And then tribute to summon out the Speed Roid Tuner if it's Takatomborg. And then once you have the Tuner on field, Hagosha can actually just summon itself. Uh, while you control a speed void tuner, but you're locked into speed voids for the rest of the, I mean, you're locked into wind for the rest of the turn. Not a big deal. But level three non tuner, uh, synchro plus level three tuner, crystal wing. Now, there really aren't that many good gusto tuners, right? So I was trying to theory with Vadir, and I think like Vadir could work if you summon it earlier on in the turn uh, off the Griffin discard, but it doesn't allow you to pivot it into a Baron. So I decided like not to showcase this discard in the line. Also kind of sucks it only mills Gusto monsters on summon when we have a really good Gusto card that came out um, a few years back that like no one's been able to really use because there's no way to search this card. So it can only equip to Gustos, but it can banish itself from graveyard drop a wind and add any gusto spell or trap from deck to hand which means you get to search cards like contact with gusto on top of being able to search itself so it can even if it's milled it can drop one search another copy of itself and then when it's equipped it can activate its effect based on it what the level of the equipped monster is if you equip the level four lower gusto to this it can summon a gusto with a different type. So uh, the Gustos are Psychics, Wind Beasts, Squirrels, a Thunder. It's, it's like random ass Thunder for no reason. But yeah, they're mostly uh, Wing Beast and Psychics. If you have a Wing Beast one, you can summon out a Psychic. If you have a Psychic, you summon out a Wing Beast. If the Gusto you equip this to is level five or higher, which your only two level five or higher Gustos is Windar and Rees, or your Synchros, you can summon a level one tuner from your deck, but that's any level one tuner, not just Gustos which could be really cool. And then you have like contact with Gusto and you're gonna be like milling a lot of Gusto, sending a lot of Gusto to Graveyard. So even like your smaller Synchro Gustos, like uh, Die Gusto Goldos can take advantage of that, shuffle back Gustos into deck, pop cards. And I think like this could be a really good like wind Synchro pile deck that doesn't commit too hard to any particular thing, but rather utilizes all the different parts of its smaller engines, like super heavy, like could pivot between Baron or just making the Dia the Avalantis and then uh the flip engine gets you to ham which could you know gives you a direct route into Kamui plus Borogard and then you know you have your Borogard to flip up your monster use the Atlantis your uh, Apo to set up negates and then you get to go into your other synchros like possibly Clearwing uh possibly Freeze to protect you from battle or your Goldos to clear boards uh Lapland Pilica really isn't that great of a card because it it has a potential to dig you for stuff, but you immediately have to use those to synchro summon Gustos. And let me tell you, the other two Gusto synchros that we're not using, like Eagles, popped 
face down cards on field during end phase. And then the other one just gives you all your gusto monsters like 600 attack. It's like a level four one. Yeah, it's it's really not that good. I almost went into Sword Saga, but um, by the time you're able to make this card with the second Kamui, you're already locked into wind. And making this before you go for Borgard is actually kind of minus because you're not able to go into Sword Saga, flip, and then set another Kamui before going into Borgard. It's it's really like you'd have to go into something like Zealantis to set Borgard. But going from Borgard to Zealantis, great, easy. Going from Zealantis into Borgard, that's a fucking like mathematical equation, you know, like a fucking formula that you need to plug in for. And I don't think you're going to have the resources to make it happen, especially if you're one locked. Just a really interesting deck. I really like what we got going here. You could argue that like, this may be a better use of the 15th slot so that you have more consistent ways into Crystal Wing and you're always banishing Kendama off of Rubber Band Shooter. And I really like that Rubber Band Shooter does not lock us for using the second effect only for the first one if we're, we get rewarded for playing speedroids which another thing i actually saw a speedroid list using teratop so i like i really think teratop could be a good a really good use in this deck because you can make something like a gossip shadow before you act, before you even go for super heavy and it will be able to like protect you from like card effects and stuff or you can make like a totem bird protect you from like imperm or stop your opponent's spells and traps Harpy's Fetterstorm is an option in this list. Winda sadly has no purpose in this deck, uh, so she she's just too slow. The Wind Witches are cool, but they lock you into wind for the entire turn, and unfortunately that doesn't mix well with the flip engine stuff. It's also not that fast. It, like it's not as consistent as like just opening super heavies. So anything that locks you into flip like before you start, I mean that locks you into, into wind before you start your turn, I don't think it's worth using. Cork Shooter we could have been able to use to search speed row. Speedroid spells and traps. The issue with that is one, most of the speedroid spells and traps are really just kind of random and don't really like directly get you to what you need. They kind of like beat around the bush. He locks you into win for the entire turn that he's on that, that you summon him, so you can't even uh fully make use of him the turn that you bring him out. Or you, you couldn't even use him the turn in, in this deck, right? And they have cool Pentagoldos. Yeah, this this shuffles back two into the deck and then bounces to hand. So instead of like contact with Gusto, which, which like pops, returns back to hand. So this is better against like back row and stuff. This is better against maybe like extra deck monsters. Blessings for Gusto, it just revives Gusto from graveyard. We have three or more. Tailwind is great. I almost went for cheap, cheap, cheap to go for the Gusto synchros. The issue was is that all the Gusto synchros require the non-tuner to be Gustos. So cheap, cheap, cheap really has no place in the deck, sadly. Uh, duplicate could be cool as like an interruption, but it's not searchable unless it's with like cork shooter, which I just explained why that card isn't that great. This requires a synchro tuner, which we're just, we just don't have the gas to make a synchro tuner plus this. We could make punk amazing dragon because we do use level three psychics like Sam Pelica, which is also why we're using E-Telly because Pelica is just level three psychic that you can get off of E-Telly in case you don't want to go into it in your normal combo, but yeah. And then Hidden Armory to search this as well. Like it, with the super heavy package, we in theory don't need our normal summon. We can just Pendulum summon out Orphus Scorpio plus whatever else we have in hand. And that should be able to get us like where we need to be, I think. So yeah, that was uh, Speedroids. Going into some of the other lists, the more beast type list, right? So um, the list that I showed more towards the beginning, you can use stuff like Pile of the Forbidden since you're playing like the Prediction Princesses. It is a lot of engine. You can maybe cut some ratios down, like maybe you can cut Horse down to like two and Shield Bearer down to one simply because of Rescue Cat. I'm only playing the one Revolt at the moment. The rest of the space, you know, these other slots are for non-engine. Deus Ex Crawler could be interesting because if you get nibbed after you go for the Crawler Receptor plus Axon, you, they can actually both trigger. One can summon Soma face down from deck. The other one can summon Deus Ex Crawler face down from deck because it, they don't have a level limit for what monsters that they can summon. So one of them can just summon both Soma and Deus Ex Crawler. And it's like, in case you they have like a nib or something, you can trigger both because they would both have legal targets in deck. Assuming you didn't open either one, they would both have legal targets. It's just only one would be able to actually resolve and set the two monsters. I put the outstanding dogs in side deck. I know they're a little more gimmicky. I put the ultra polymerization in side deck because I know it's a little more gimmicky. 
it's maybe not everyone's taste to play like a non-searchable fusion spell. It's not like we're playing branded or anything. Uh, instant fusion is no longer needed in main. In theory, you can even cut like Master of Ham down to one. And maybe you could play more linked monsters like uh, Tri Brigade friendly, like uh, Double Dragon Lords, like Harpy's Chandler, just to get, you know, to be able to resolve like a Harpy's Fetter Stormer, whatever. And this is the build that I think I'm starting to like the most in terms of what the flip can do. Simply because look at how little engine we actually have to play. Look at how much space we have for non-engine. Like Call by the Grave onwards, that's 16 slots we have in a 40 card deck for non-engine. Even if the route is somewhat linear, that's a lot of hand traps to be able to maneuver around and to be able to stop our opponent. And uh, nine starters in like 40 cards is still pretty good. I have the Lone Fire here just in case, you know, just for like a temp starter to go to Orphus Scorpio. Um, even with the Ghost Trick Garnets, it's like we're really not playing that many Garnets too. Playing both Prediction Princesses, I think, is a little crazy. I think maybe over time people may want to cut the Terror Ray simply because it's not part of the actual combo. It doesn't come in until turn three. So Wraith may be more important and Ray can be cuttable just so you don't have to, you brick less often on it. That's also a possibility. And yeah, I mean, you know, if you, if you cut the Ray and maybe like one of the other prediction rituals, you can uh, cut it down to like 18 non-engine slots, or you can start playing like more alternative engines, or you can play more like Lone Fires. Spore, I was kind of on the edge about because Spore is kind of, it's great if you open Lone Fire, but it can also brick you if you don't open Lone Fire. And, you know, now that we're somewhat more reliant on the super heavy side of things, it's it's less of a consistency card and more of kind of just there. And I was even considering this thing. Like, it, with any deck that could use the Prediction Princesses, uh, I was considering the Vela stuff simply because it can change battle position while you control a Ritual Monster, and then it can summon itself, and then it gets you access into a whole nother engine. So that could be interesting. You see a lot of space being taken up just to resolve a lot of this flip stuff. And Guard Dog's a great card if you can resolve it, even like Whirlwind Weasel as well, which actually isn't in here. I should put that. But Whirlwind e Weasel would easily go on the side. You don't really need Book of Tayo in this list because you're not really, because you're only summoning the flip off of Ham. I mean, like there's really, like otherwise you're just hard opening Bibble, which is just pretty rare. You could also play like alternative uh, flip monsters like uh, Pot or, you know, Deus Ex Crawler. And, you know, with, with Terror Ray, that could be great. But without Terror Ray, you don't need them. So really the world's your, your oyster when it comes to how the flip engine has evolved. And I think like every little engine playing their part is like a, a wonderful thing to see. Like, yes, it may be a little easier to brick off of this, but bike is a bona fide one card combo like bike and wakashi are bona fide one card combos now thanks to soul piercer and it's it's really amazing to see how far this deck has come yeah i mean going back to the amalgamation there's a lot more that we haven't explored yet and there's more that i want to explore with the uh gishki side of things so like i just like right before i, I hit record i was like holy shit there is a gishki fucking like, there's so many flips that just say, like, add one, you know? Like, Gravekeeper Spy, everyone knows about Spy. That's why I was itching to work with Spy for so long. But, um, I, I just never, you know, really put the mental energy into it. And then you, you have a car like Ariel, you have, like, Battery Man Microcell that can, like, do stuff. And it's crazy just how many more flip engines there are and how much more that they can do for decks that aren't really that explored or discovered and i think uh, i don't want to do more from here i only want to expand more from here even like dust knight i was thinking like what else could dust knight do in a deck milling earth monsters does that mean anything i uh, kind of get my brain meets going but yeah i think i've we've reached close to the end of where i think i want the flip engine to be and i'm really getting happy with both the like tricat variant with like potentially just like Tri Brigade and you know, even with or without the crawler stuff, being able to go into like Guard Dog and being able to manipulate its resources to make its engine a lot stronger or to make its engine a lot more consistent. 
and to make ham more consistent. I'm really enjoying where Gravekeepers are going. Also, for Gravekeepers, uh, these two are a flex spot. You either do one or the other. You don't need to play both because clearly one's a lot better than the other, but yeah. really cool deck though. Um, I was, I was playtesting a lot of shit in this one. Actually, th this is part of the reason why I'm like, it took me a week. What, like, I know the combo looks so simple, but like to actually figure out how to man maneuver that took me way longer than it should have. Right. Um, and then I was almost going to use this and then I realized, wait a minute, this is dead under Necro Valley. But if it wasn't, it's like there's so many options, you know, because Artemis would be in Graveyard. Then you can go for like Iwas or, you know, you can go for a Witchcrafter. If you want to use like the Witchcrafter hand trap one, that could be cool. Um, Dragon Crown, because Borgard would be in Graveyard. It can, uh, it's, it's, it's really good against like monsters that activate effect to special summon. So like Snake Eyes, this could be really good against Snake Eyes. And then you have something like Quintet where... If you go into the full combo and then your board gets completely broken, if you have a Magicalized Fusion, this card basically can game your opponent by banishing five and then just ending their life. Like, I know, like, if you were to go for something like Chief, right? Like, if you were to go for Chief, then your graveyard being unaffected by Necro Valley, you would still be able to resolve Magicalized Fusion. So I'm wondering if there's a more consistent way to get into a monster like Chief without it being my only play. And they have talents for Royal Tribute, or not talents, Thrust for Royal Tribute. More Thrones, I just feel like these do give you extra normal summons and you do search your Gravekeepers, but it being hard once per turn makes it a hard sell. Necro Valley, otherwise this would have been great. This is unaffected by Necro Valley, but it means very little in the great scheme of things other than to add back like Recruiters, but Recruiter, there's, there's, there's only so much Recruiter can actually search. Like, there's even an argument to not play this card at three just because there's really like you you've run out of things to search like really quickly once you go into the loops with this card so it's really not necessary i have illusion could be cool because you can take control of your opponent's monsters if you have a spellcaster wonder wand which is one i was really theorying with like i was going into like a whole like desires wonder wand kind of list like how how much could we actually draw that didn't really work out and then there was another one uh fucking crowley you can normal summon level five or higher spellcasters without tributing and I was like, oh great, I can summon out Chief, and then Chief doesn't trigger because it has to be Tribute Summon. It's not on normal, it's on Tribute Summon. And I guess that's the difference, right? Not all normal summons are Tribute Summons because, yeah, you still need to Tribute a monster to, sum to summon it. So, unfortunately, Crowley has no place in the list. It, needing to reveal three different spellbooks makes this a flush. Level five or higher spellcaster is not really being... There is more Magistus support coming, so hopefully, you know, we get more stuff that can be tacked into Gravekeepers and, you know, increase the speed and versatility of the deck. But I know asking for Gravekeeper support is probably a big ask. Gravekeepers can be a really annoying floodgate dot deck if they're, you know, left unchecked for too long. So I don't think that's going to be happening. I don't know. I'm sure someone out there wants to summon out Gravekeepers Descendant again in 2024. And I guess I just show them a way how, right? Like, you know, when you do that search, search two, search three fucking combo, you can just search Descendant. You just summon it and then basically FTK them through Spellbound. Yeah, that's that's uh, been all for Flip video for Flip Monsters today. I am flipped out. I, I well, not not entirely, but, you know, I'm going to take it take me a, a bit of a break from exploring the lines of flipped so I, you know we can get other kinds of content out here but we're, 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 i'm not giving up on it you know as i said we we got a lot more to explore with ada gishki ariel and uh apologies to the one dude who wanted the fucking pangus evil tiles dust knight pangu fucking uh possibly novellus i can't say for sure and I don't and I, I think I've explained the issue with like the Guardian Sphinx stuff and maybe I can make an actual subterra deck. Like maybe maybe an actual subterra deck is out there just waiting to be made and I just have yet to explore it. Who knows how much more there is to this, but I got a regionals coming up. I gotta practice for that shit too. So that's why I need to take a small bit of a break from uh doing all these flip videos just so I can get that good uh play testing in, see uh, so I can be ready for the IRL event. So yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, been all for, for me. Maybe even a proper crawler deck. I, I still have to get into that, like doing a proper crawler deck as well. It never ends. It's like you, you think you're near the end of all the flip 
monsters and then there's just another flip you just find another flip that's a whole nother deck and it's like fuck and yeah uh, i think figuring out more utility for what we can do with the super heavies what we can do with the uh tricat variant and what we can do with the ghost trick scorpio variant um is going to be a very interesting and i think like raw prediction princess i don't know if that'll ever be a deck either I can tell you straight up that worms are, are going to be very difficult because this dude is is like not summonable by any convenient means in 2024. It's like there's no branded route that can go into him. He's, his level's too high. The polys are all, you know, somewhat inconsistent. And then you need two worm monsters. And it's like the best worm type flip, like adds from deck to hand. Dude, there's so many shenanigans that we have yet to get into. Uh, but I, I don't know if Worms is, is, is even possible. I don't know if Worms is possible. I can I can sure as hell try. I do like the two plus effect though. Like the fact that once I make it with two monsters, I can just reset reptiles from graveyard once per turn. That's great. That's all I need. I don't need the four plus or six plus effects. I like, I don't need the feature fusion shit. I just need this to work. Unfortunately, it's like lack of stats, like zero defense. It's like crazy for level 10. That's a big ask. But yeah, that's been all for now. Um, join the discord. If you have any questions about, uh, what your deck can do with flip engine or, uh, just anything about flip related or, you know, you related, you guys know where to find me. This has been great time. It's been so real. I can't wait to do more. Signing out.